a busy weekend for the Minnesota Wild, some injuries, and a busy week ahead. We talk about an exciting weekend for the Minnesota Wild that unfortunately resulted in two losses, and look ahead to the week to come on today's episode of Locked on Wild. You're locked on Wild. Your daily podcast on the Minnesota Wild. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's happening, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Locked On Wild, your daily Minnesota Wild podcast. Part of the Locked On Sports Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks, as always, for making Locked on Wild your first listen each and every day. Just a reminder, you can find Locked on Wild on your favorite podcast platforms every single day of the week, absolutely free of charge. On today's episode of Locked on Wild, we recap a busy weekend for the Wild with Alex Micheletti. We'll take a look at the games coming up this week, some injuries, and some other to discuss on today's episode. My name is Seth Topol, your daily Minnesota Wild insider. We bring in Alex Micheletti, unfortunately not a victory Micheletti Monday, but we'll take a Micheletti Monday nonetheless. Um, an exciting game against Buffalo, as we'll talk about, and uh, kind, of a, kind of a snoozer against the Blues, but we expected it to be a little bit less of a scoring type game after what we saw in Buffalo. So let's start with the Sabres game. Um, that Sabres team is a wagon. Yeah, I mean, Paige Thompson, I mean, watching that guy play and for how big he is, too, he's like like six, seven on skates. It's uh it's crazy. He's got a heck of a shot. Um, they have some talent. I mean, Rasmus Stalin had five points. I think that's uh uh that's the most points a defenseman has scored in wild against the wild in, in team history. Um and you know, Casey Middlestead was great. Um of course, of course Alex Tuck, um, anytime he plays the wild, he's gonna get up for that one. Um, and yeah, Victor Olsen, that was a beautiful goal in overtime. So yeah, they, they, they're a fun team and, uh, they're just in a tough division. I don't know if they're going to make the playoffs, but <laughs> they're going to give, uh, you know, a heck of a run against teams. Well, and the wilds saw it and they were on the unfortunate wrong end of it in that if you allow those guys to get to their spots, they're going to beat you. I mean, that Thompson power play goal that was top shelf, past Marc-Andre Fleury, I, I said it after the game, that there is not a goalie in the NHL that can defend against that type of shot. And so you as a decor have to prevent those guys from getting to those areas, and the Wild just were not able to do that pretty much the entire night. Yeah, they were. Uh, the pace of the game was just uh, was something else. The Wild were, were struggling to keep up with Buffalo. Um, you know, a lot of teams will, um, just with, with how quick that team is. Um, and... You know, just the energy in that building was just <laughs> it was going bonkers, um, you know, especially when they when they tied it up late there. And just with with everything that city's gone through in the you know past couple of weeks, um, you know, you knew it was going to be a tough, tough environment for, for the wild to, you know, you know to contain them. And uh, yeah, um, it, you know, it was still still good that they got the point, too. Um, they didn't let let you know buffalo get get the two points so um you know that's that's what you gotta be positive about that yeah so they they got the point it's a tough environment to play in with the crowd that electric and you know the the only reason that the wild did get a point was uh due to the efforts by and large by flurry to keep it at a uh, five five game number of chances down the stretch where you could argue that buffalo should have won in regulation and yet they were able to get the point. You turn around. We'll talk a little bit more about Flurry here in a second. But you turn around then. You take on the St. Louis Blues. Blues are not the Buffalo Sabres. And so we had a slower pace. And Tomas Grice has – Tomas Grice giveth most of the time. But in this one, he definitely taketh away. And uh, the Wild just kind of got lulled into one of those – Craig Berube masterpieces, uh, three nothing shutout loss. Yeah, he, he he turned into Jake Allen against the Wild in, in the playoffs of, of yesteryear. Um, yeah, I mean both uh, 
both teams were on a back end of a back to back. Um, you know, and, uh, St. Louis had a tough loss to Montreal, who's kind of in tank mode. Um, and uh, you just didn't know what to expect tonight. Um, and there was just no energy from from the Wild team. And um, you know, they got uh, surprised with uh, you know Jordan Greenway not being able to play right before. Um, and they went with the dreaded eleven seven combo. Which which never seems to work for the Wild, right? When you saw it was announced, it was like, oh boy, um, you know, there was just no energy late. Um, you know, late in the game too, they had a six on four that, you know, you know didn't just they couldn't get any momentum going with it. Um, and you know, you had guys playing more minutes than they probably should have. You know, Krill was, looked like he was gassed, and Matt Boldy was unbelievable, but he looked really tired too, and so. Yeah, it was that was a tough loss. Um, of course, um, you know, Wild um, Brand, Brandon Saad always seems to do well against against the Wild, no matter what organization he's with. And Braden Shen again, you know, he was a pest in that playoff series, and he came up big for the Blues. Um, they were extremely shorthanded, but somehow pulled it out, like you said, a, a Craig Berube masterpiece. Yeah, I have railed enough against the eleven seven. In this case, I'm not as upset with it because it was an emergency situation. And we've seen this team a couple of times this year choose to play that route, which I just cannot endorse whatsoever. And, you know, as you alluded to with Ryan Hartman and Jewel Erickson Eck getting hurt too during the game, you were down to like, you were down to nine guys. Thankfully, they came back, but it got real dicey there in the uh, the second period. Uh, Wild had three shots in the second period, which is hideous. But then they finished the game. I think they had 24 shots in the third period, and the Blues had three, including the empty net goal. So it's just it's just one of those weird things. It's like if they had a little more energy, I think, during the middle portion of the game, they probably are able to tie it up and kind of pull momentum their way. They just couldn't get it, couldn't get it done. Yeah, um, this team without Matt Zuccarello, um, it's <laughs> it's a completely different team. Uh, you know, they with without him, you know, you you see the results. Um, he he is so important for this team. Um, you know, if they if they can't make any type of move at the trade deadline, they can't afford to have him be out very long because. Um, he's so important to the offense. Um, his, his chemistry with Kirill, um, it's just, it's unmatched. And, um, you know, those two will the wild to victory sometimes when, when the team doesn't have it every night. And so, um, yeah, it's, at, 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 at points it's, it's, it's tough hockey to watch with, without him. Um, and so hopefully, um, you know, he can get, you know, you know, back, uh, to what he was and, you know, I don't fault Gustafson tonight um, to wave. Um, you know, you know he had to get it out after probably still not a hundred percent. You know, he played, but you know that's that's still got to be pretty tough uh, after, you know, after being sick. Well, and you look at the goals too. the The power play goal that the Blues scored was like a fifty fifty bounce. Gustafson had the shot; it just bounced off of his glove. Jake Middleton is right there to get it out from in front of the net and he simply misses he swings and misses and it just so happens that the blues player that was in front is right there to hit it and just wide open tap in it's if that is if that goes the other way there's no goal there and then the other goal that the blues scored was a two-on-one in which uh, i believe it was hartman kind of got caught at the top of the zone and the blues were able to sneak past him Two on one there, and then the empty netter. So no, Gustafson, Gustafson was good. He had some nice saves, and so being under the weather, able to give out that performance, he continues to roll eight and two in his last ten. And so uh, nothing, nothing that happened in this one really changed our thinking as to how Gustafson has done this year. It's just, it's just one of those games. Yep, I mean. <laughs> Uh, like, you know, like we talked about to these, these back-to-backs, you just, <laughs> you just never know what you're going to get. Um, you know, and, uh, they got an interesting week ahead, uh, for sure. Um, you don't know who's going to be in the lineup, who's back, uh, you know, so it's good. 
you know, you get you get a game in the Big Apple, which is always always interesting with with the Wild and and, and the Rangers for sure. Yeah, and we'll we'll talk about what is coming up because it's it's the New York trip, and then you have a home game on Saturday too before a road trip. So it's um, props to props to the schedulers for uh, for some dandy work because you know the other part, the St. Louis Blues play the Calgary Flames in St. Louis two games in a row on a Monday and a Thursday. Or a, a Tuesday <laughs> what, are we, and a Thursday. what are we doing here? I, I are, they, don't, are, they, are both teams going to go out to dinner together? You know? I, I don't get it. I mean, it's not even that you did like the home and home thing, which I understand if you want to go that route. Mm-hmm. It's literally two games in St. Louis in the span of like four days. <laughs> it makes no sense again. You know? I, I don't understand. Yeah. But We'll talk about all that, plus uh, we'll talk about some of those injuries and some other lineup things as well as we continue today's episode of Locked on Wild after this. Today's episode is brought to you by Athletic Greens. And if you are looking for a great way to get your vitamin and supplement routine in line, AG1 is the route to go. All it takes is one delicious scoop of AG1 and you are absorbing 75 High-quality vitamins, whole food-sourced superfoods, probiotics, adaptogens, and minerals to help start your day right. Plus, it is also lifestyle-friendly. Whether you eat keto, paleo, vegan, dairy-free, or gluten-free, AG1 is a small microhabit with big benefits. It's one thing you can do every single day to take great care of yourself. And it is shown to be effective with over 7,000 five-star reviews. Right now, it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition. It's just one scoop in a cup of water every single day. That's it. That's all. No need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health. And to make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash NHL Network. Again, that's athleticgreens.com slash NHL Network to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. Continuing today's episode of Locked on Wild, once again, thanks for making Locked on Wild your first listen each and every day. Make sure you check out the Locked on NHL Prospects show as well for your second listen to get the lowdown on all of the youngsters that'll be gearing up for the NHL draft, as well as prospect rankings for every team throughout the NHL as well, all free and available on your favorite podcast platforms. Seth Topol and Alex McGletty taking a look at uh, some of the injury notes for the Minnesota Wild. Sounds like Matt Zuccarello will make the trip. Not sure if he will play. I don't know what's, I don't know what the status is with Jordan Greenway either. I would imagine he will accompany the team but uh, this team went from just about healthy to now uh, dealing with a few things. And that's just on the injury side. Marc-Andre Fleury uh, left the team after the Buffalo game to uh, attend to some personal matters. All the best to him in that situation. Uh, sounds like he will rejoin the team in New York. But a lot going on here for the Minnesota Wilds uh, after getting Brandon Duhame back in the mix. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, we t- we talk about the depth on this team, and it's uh, certainly getting challenged again. Um, you-, you would think uh, Zuccarello is doing everything possible to play, you know, against the Rangers, just because you know he played for that franchise for so long, and you know, some so many good memories and uh, at Madison Square Garden, uh, the Greenway thing. You know, who knows? You know, do you want a guy that's sick traveling with the team? That's uh, you don't want that to get spread around around the team. So it'll be interesting to see if he makes the the team flight or not. Um, you know, hopefully he does, just because I, I just uh, I don't I don't really like Ryan Reeves with with the Eck and Felino. Um, it just kind of really it neutralizes the offense for that line. Um, yeah. so. Um, you know, hopefully, hopefully Greenway gets back, uh, here soon. Um, and, and Flurry, we wish him all the best, um, too. And, uh, uh, the good thing is Gus is, um, you know, he made it through tonight. Um, so he'll probably, um, I would expect him to go against the Rangers, but, uh, you know, just, uh, you know, to give, uh, 
uh, Flurry and you know some uh, um, you know you know some more time to you know, get get over whatever he's dealing with personally. Yeah. I don't think you throw him in. You know. No, and and the fact that it's not a back to back. I mean, mm-hmm. you can you can go Gustafson on Tuesday, and then you can if you need if you need you can go to Flurry on um, on Thursday, or you could even hold him until Saturday against Arizona. <laughs> You've got yeah. some options, but the the thing I think that it is a little frustrating is you know you you have you get Duhame back. He's looked really good. That um, that Duhame Goudreau Hartman line has done some good things over these uh, these two games that they have been put together. And so you look at like the who comes out question when everybody is back. It is going to be one of those fourth line guys. I I have kept saying that I think Duhame has put himself in the not coming out of the lineup category. Mm-hmm. If anything. I think we're moving towards maybe Mason Shaw being the first one to get uh, a breather, which would be unfortunate because he he brings good things to the lineup, but that high staking penalty, not even one necessarily that was his fault. He's had a few other penalties though that have been. And so it, it may be him that draws the first healthy scratch of the bunch when everybody comes back. If we, if we get to that point, yeah, I I was I was going to mention his name, but right before you uh, uh, you did, um, you know, I, you can't pull Connor Dewar from the lineup just with, um, you know, what he means to the penalty kill. Um, he's been fantastic, um, and you know that's it, it, it's it's probably going to be Shaw, um, you know, uh, maybe Reeves, um, but you know, just like you said with Shaw, just with some of the penalties he's been taking, um, uh, he's probably. You know, not a you know, you don't want to do it, but someone has to sit, right? Yeah. Well, and it's it's a situation too, uh, from what you know, Kevin Gorg said in our postcast, from what other guys that cover the team, Joe Smith, Michael Russo, there are plenty of guys that are banged up on this team. And so it's not like Shaw is gonna sit for the rest of the season. There are gonna be plenty of opportunities to work guys in and out of the lineup. It gets tricky, but you probably could, if you had a scenario where you get players back, you probably could look to give somebody a rest day against Arizona at home. Um, but yeah, it's, it's going to be a tough choice, but I think it's going to have to be probably shot to start. And then after that, you just ride the hot hands. And if somebody starts to struggle, then maybe you give them a day off to just kind of think about it and regroup. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with a little rotation, right? Um, and uh, like you said, um, maybe when you're playing some lesser opponents, um, give guys breathers. Um, you know, um, you know, Ryan Hartman and Eric Snack were both banged up tonight, um, and those are such key players to this team too. So if you get a chance to let their bodies uh, recover a little bit more, that that would be ideal for sure, especially Eck. Yeah. Yeah, and it's it's nice too that you have a complement of players in Iowa in the event that you have a couple of guys that miss a couple of games. I mean, you've got Sammy Walker, you've got Adam Beckman, you've got other guys that have come up at the NHL level and have shown that they're capable of doing it. So the depth, again, the depth, Anson Carter, depth. <laughs> um, the depth is there. It's just you'd like to get all those guys into the lineup that you you count on so that we can start getting some of these line combos ironed out again. It's where you can roll four deep. Couldn't do that against the Blues. Couldn't really do that against the Sabres because those top three lines were, were performing pretty well offensively. But let's get back to four deep. And, uh, and yeah, Dewar's not coming out of, out of the lineup. Shout out to Denny. Um, the president of the Connor Dewar fan club here yes. at uh, Lock yes, Wild. Uh, penalty killer elite. There's no coincidence that he is near the top of the list in shorthanded points in the NHL. He's an opportunist and he uses those skills and those instincts and that speed to generate chances um, that, that one against, I think it was against Buffalo where him and Shaw nearly had a two on one. And just the puck poked away right at the top of the zone. 
and Buffalo goes and they score. It's like you are you're operating on just a tiny plane of like, okay, it could have gone to where it was a shorthanded goal. It's just the universe decided in this instance, we're going to go to the other end of it. So yeah, it's, it's not going to be doer. It'll be Shaw and it'll be off days for everybody else as needed, but we got a little ways before we get to that point again, because now players are banged up and uh, it all starts with the uh, the dreaded New York, New York trip, Islanders and the Rangers on tap. And so we'll look at those games. We'll look at that one game homestand against Arizona to finish off the week <laughs> as we continue today's episode of Locked on Wild after this. Today's episode also brought to you by BetOnline.net. They are your number one source for betting info plus stats, news and analysis. You can get the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there from the NFL playoffs to the college football championship game, the NBA, the NHL, they've got it all at betonline.net. And if you love sports podcasts, you can even find those at betonline as well. They're always the fastest and easiest way to get your betting info. So head to their website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and the action at betonline where the game starts. Final segment of today's episode of Lockdown Wilds. Once again, thanks for making Lockdown Wilds your first listen each and every day of the week. Minnesota Wild will start their week on Tuesday against the New York Rangers. Alex, 7-3 to three loss for the Wild on opening night to the Rangers. They went through a period of time in which I think there were some rumblings that maybe Gerard Gallant was going to get fired. Uh, they have righted the ship, but then again, this is not the same wild team that uh, the Rangers will face from the beginning of the season. And so this one should be, this should be a nice little test for the wild to, uh, to start the New York trip. Um, going to have to bring some good focus and intensity on defense, but I think the wild are definitely up for the challenge. Yeah, they're coming off a really tough loss to the Devils. They were up on the Devils, and then the Devils came back and won. Um, so, uh, you know, they're going to be fired up, uh, you know, coming off a loss. The Wild should be, too. Um, you know, our our, our, our good <laughs> Igor Shosturkin, um, you know, she's twerking. Uh, <laughs> um, you know, he, he's he's been up and down, um, and but he's still, I think, one of the best uh, – goalies in the NHL um so um it should be should be interesting and and you know like like, like I mentioned you know Madison Square Garden is one of the best uh best arenas in the NHL so um you know the atmosphere should be awesome uh they got to shut down um uh, you know Mika Zibanejad and uh uh Artemi Panarin and you know Chris Kreider always seems to be uh good against the wild so um yeah they, they have their hands full I think offensively against uh, the Rangers Interesting, though, that the Rangers are 9-7-4 and four at home mm -hmm. this year as opposed to 13-5-3 and three on the road. The Rangers have already lost seven games in overtime this year. So if you can get, a, if you can get it to OT, you got a shot. Yeah, another, another big factor for this game, too, is uh, you know, Jacob Truba uh, always seems to, you know, looking, you know, uh, headshots um so you know you have uh you know ryan reeves out there patrolling too if uh you know if trubo wants to to do anything you know nonsense um so uh that'll, that'll be huge to have reeves out there we're we're getting to the point it's been a little while since we've had one of those ryan reeves takeover enforcement games like <laughs> he had against the detroit red wings so maybe we see one of those uh against a rangers team that i think if the Wilds come out with a good start, they can probably um, can probably take this one. If they if they start off hot, maybe get I don't know four or five goal lead. I would say a two goal lead, but that's the worst lead in hockey I've been told. You don't want that. No. no. So that'll be interesting to see. Then you got an Islanders team that is, you know, the the Metropolitan Division is so competitive that the Islanders are 11 points back of the Hurricanes, and they currently sit in sixth place in the division. But they're 22, 17, and 2. So it's not like they're having a terrible season, but they're 
They're feisty. They're a really defensive team too. Um, and it'll be back to back games of Russian goalies, you know, uh, from Igor to uh, Sorokin probably, or Varley, um, you know, who the wild have had a lot of history against um, in, you know, Zach Parisi, um, uh, you know, you got another, another contract there. Um, so, you know, he'll be all, all up to go for a revenge uh, style game. And, uh, you know, kudos to Brock Nelson for making his first uh, all-star appearance. Um, he's worked really hard, um, you know, to have a really solid career. And, you know, he, he died a native Anders Lee too. Um, so, yeah, it should be – that should be a really interesting uh, game. Uh, I think, you know, both both the Wild and the Islanders are pretty, you know, stiff defensively um, Some you know, a lot of the times. So I expect a really low-scoring, uh, probably boring game like it was tonight against the Isles. And then on Saturday, the Wild will have an opportunity to take out some frustration if they, <laughs> you know, if they win one of the two games against the New York teams. Hopefully, they don't lose both. Um, maybe they win both. We'll we'll have to wait and see. But regardless, they'll have either some frustration to take out on the Arizona Coyotes on Saturday, or they'll just do what they do against Arizona. Uh, that Coyotes team, they've lost five in a row. If you talk about the kind of the old adage of teams looking ahead to their travel plans once the season is done, like the last week of the season to where they get eliminated, it's like, oh, those guys already had their golf trips ready. <laughs> Arizona had their golf trips ready before the season started this year. Yeah, I mean, this this past this over the weekend, they played the Blackhawks um, and I, I, I termed it the Connor. Bedard tank uh, bowl um, and they, they let Chicago win. Um, oh. So, um, you know, they're a team that's almost ready to, to blow things up. You know, if they, you know, they might be trading both uh, Jacob Chikrin and Shane Gossis bear, um, you know, so, you know, teams desperately want one of those two guys. And so once those two go, it could get even worse for the coyotes. And uh, you know, it's, it's a good thing that the wild are playing them. Um, uh, at the X um, instead of on the road because teams that have been going to Mullet Arena, they've been getting the uh, uh, Scottsdale hangover <laughs> effect where some some really good teams have lost to Arizona at home. So, um, you know, it's uh, it's good that uh, it's going to be at the X. And, uh, you, know, it, you know, it's a good game to, you know, let out some frustrations for sure, just like you said. Um, you mentioned that those three games that they have most recently won – at home, they beat the Kings, the Avalanche, and the Maple Leafs in order. <laughs> Bad teams. Yeah. And then they lost to the Lightning, the Panthers, the Flyers, the Blackhawks, and the Penguins. So they got back onto the tank. <laughs> they said we gotta we gotta keep up with Chicago. They were like, We we've done this winning thing a little too much. I think we have to go <laughs> back. It back, back. rain it back. Yeah. yeah. Don't get too far out in front, or you have no chance at Connor Bedard. Uh, Alex, let's just finish up with a little all-star game chatter as uh, Kirill Kaprizov, the Wilds' lone representative at this point, and I'm still trying to figure out the, how the whole thing works. I, th From what I gather, there was this initial round of players that was selected. Now fans have the opportunity to go to the NHL website and vote for players to be in like the final vote yeah. and then they'll take the players that get the most votes and then play people will have a chance to vote on that via Twitter to determine the remaining all-star representatives. <sighs> it's, it's, it's just, Oh, come on. Come on. <laughs> it, yeah. I, it makes no sense, but whatever the league wants to do, they, you know, I mean, I get, I get trying to get fans involved, but can't you like just put the list much. together? <laughs> like, put the list. Make together. it more organized. You know? that's all I'm saying. Put the list together and then just say, okay, here are the players that you can vote from, as opposed to, hey, pick every player that didn't get put on the team and then we'll A free for all votes. <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't know. I would like to I, I would like to see and it won't happen because 
uh, UC Saros was the only goalie selected for the Central Division. So you're going to have a couple that get in. Hellebuck, um, Ottinger. So I would like to see Philip Gustafson get some love for his performance so far this season and then also Matt Zuccarello, but I don't know. There are a lot of guys that did not get selected that are having some pretty good seasons. and Especially those goalies that you mentioned. I mean, yeah. Ottinger and Hellebuck, they've been playing out of their minds. No one no one expected those two teams to be where they are. Um, and watch out, watch out Jets. They're fully healthy now. And, uh, they, had, they had a giant win against uh, uh, against the Canucks tonight, um, and, you know, or last night. And, you know, Kyle Connor had a hat trick and Ehlers had three points. So, yeah, that, that's a team no one wants to play right now for sure. They've won five in a row yeah. uh, to climb back into the uh, – climb back firmly into second place in the division. They're fighting it out with Dallas. The Wild have third place right now. But Colorado is starting to nip on their heels, and they're waiting for Gabriel Landeskog to return. Please win some games so that we can get a little separation for third place. It's chaos. It's chaos in the central. Um, you know, uh, you know, Nathan McKinnon had the you know uh, amazing goal against Edmonton the other night, and Kale McCarr. Uh, he played 32 minutes and <laughs> uh, in in just before the overtime. Uh, the guy is just a freak of nature. Um, I, I I want nothing. You know. Get your wins before Colorado turns into cy cyborg mode um, yeah. and wins like you know twelve in a row. Yeah, we uh, we don't need we don't need the uh, the robots to become sentient and take over. Uh, we've already tried that. And the Terminator franchise already tried that like six <laughs> times. So just let them be. But um, we'll see what happens here this week. Next week is uh, next week is daunting. Uh, we'll leave that until that time but uh there is a nice east coast road trip on the way for the minnesota wilds they got that home game against arizona though as a buffer so we'll see what happens but uh, that's going to do it for today's episode of locked on wild now that your first listen of the day is done locked on nhl is waiting for you to give a full recap of everything that happened throughout the weekend so make sure you check that out as well as following us on youtube all your favorite podcast platforms all your favorite social media platforms, plus Amazon Music, plus TikTok. We're everywhere, keeping you up to date on all things Minnesota Wild throughout the week, throughout the month, throughout the rest of the season as well. So follow along as we guide you through the rest of the season with new episodes every Monday through Friday as part of the Locked on Sports Podcast Network.